Yo, what is going on today, YouTube? Hope you guys are doing fantastic. Today's video, we're talking about 11.3, the patch that is coming out tomorrow. And we're going to be talking about builds that might be changing for specific roles when the patch drops. We're going to be starting with Soul Lane, working our way over to ADC and support. We're just going to be talking about potential builds that might be changed because of the patch notes. Patch notes video, if you are interested, are from uh, last week. So you can go back and watch that, get my thoughts on everything. And then tomorrow's video will be looking at all the different individual changes to gods that affected how they're played and we're kind of just going to go through that and see like how much is it actually going to matter look at it visually see how much it, it really changes anything but yeah for then though jump right in starting with soul lane we've got a blue stone build and a sigil build the blue stone build is a pretty basic build the only thing that's changing is now soul leader's getting that extra 10 power especially for gods like wukong maybe mulan robin stuff like that that are really safe well, Mulan's not really that safe, but she just does so much damage that she might be able to just one-shot with these three damage items. But gods that are safe and do a good amount of damage, Bluestone, Soul Leader, Breastplate, Onis, Flameforged Hammer, and Mantle of Discord. You'll have damage from Bluestone. For the landing phase, you'll have Bluestone and Soul Leader. You might be a little squishy. As soon as you get this Breastplate online, you're unfightable by a physical. Oni Hunters makes you unfightable versus Magicals. Don't upgrade the Flameforged right away. This is just here as in, like, uh, once you go late game, make sure you get Flameforged, not the other one. The other one is not very good, like, 90% of the time. And then Mantle of Discord, just round out that tankiness, round out that 40% cooldown, because that's kind of what the build is relying on. Safety from abilities and damage from abilities. That's what the ability relies on. And that's what you want, that 40% cooldown. Very tanky with this build. A lot of cooldown, a lot of damage. This one is one that I'm very excited to try out because I love Bluestone, Brooch, and Soul Eater combo. Next up, the Sigil build. This is kind of like Deathwalker's build. I couldn't remember if Deathwalker ever did Sigil or if he always did Tainted. But either way, it's basically just a rip off of his build. Sigil the Old Guard. And now that Soul Eater's back, Soul Eater. This makes you very hard to deal with in the early game because Sigil's base heals you based on abilities hitting you. Get extra protections and then you heal for 1% of your max health. That healing on top of the Soul Eater healing should make you nearly unfightable. And then once you get that, Predic Cloak, Void Shield, Genji's Mantle of Discord, just to get you to that 525 to get that 15% mitigation. With this build, you'll be at 24% mitigation after eating three abilities. And then you also have some flat pen from Soul Eater. You'll have some percent pen from Void Shield. You'll have a lot of survivability in the bit in the kit. Might not have a ton of damage, but you'll be very, very hard to kill. And then for jungle, one that I want to talk about as jungle slash solo, because it's it's a build that James was using, Ducky, a couple patches ago. But with the bobble change and just to put it out there, Bobble is pretty impactful for this patch. This is essentially the build that James is doing, except Soul Eater in for that 10% cooldown. Basically, you're just running up to people, dropping your two on them, poking them with Boot Brooch, and Titan's Bane, and that's the entirety of this build. All you're planning on doing is just poking and poking and poking. You have good all-in potential because you are Loki, but 50% cooldown, you're dropping all your abilities down to half. So instead of 15 seconds, it's a 7.5 second cooldown, which lasts four seconds. So your uptime is 50% or over 50% of being invis. Your two is on a six second cooldown. So you can poke basically every six seconds. You can walk up and try to poke again. Uh, your three, you just use it for knockup immunity and farming in the early game. And then your ult is down to a 45 second cooldown, which gives you that just really quick change of safety and all in potential with the ult. But the problem with it is... It's low-key with Bluestone Brooch. You don't really farm that well in the jungle. You're very unsafe in solo lane in the early portion. But I actually think solo lane, Loki with Jotuns and Soul Eater gives you a lot of survivability. Gives you 30% cooldown. A lot of flat pen. And then you're able to just farm out and get to that late game where you become just a nuisance. But I'm not going to tell you guys to play Loki. Unless. Next up, Cleo. This is the jungler we have for this patch. It doesn't have to be Cleo. I just thought of her as the first one that I thought could use Soul Eater really well. Obviously, Pele is another one. And there's a few other gods. But for this build specifically, Cleo is the one that came to mind. And as you know by now, I'm not a fan of Transcendence first item. It takes way, way too long to get online. It feels good second, feels good third, but first it does not feel good. But what does Soul Leader do? It allows you to get those stacks early. It's a little more expensive than Jotun's, but it gives you a little bit more healing and then a little bit more damage actually into that mid game. It's just the early game doesn't feel as good and you don't have that 20% cooldown. But then Trans, Soul Leader, so you do a ton of damage, double flat pen, and on top of that, you get a ton of power from these. Percent pen on Boomba Spear, Crusher, Heartseeker, and then Bloodforge gives you those cooldown resets to get you even more power. You should do a ton of damage with this build. This is another one that I'm very excited to try out because I love Cleo, and I think with this build, you'll be one-shotting. You'll be very hard to deal with in 90% of fights. Going over to mid lane, and this is the one that kind of changes the most. We've actually got three builds for Agni. It's not an Agni thing. I just, Agni was the first mage that popped up. So with Agni... The first build is Gem Focus, Doom Orb, Soul Gem, Soul Reaver, Karen's Coin, Radatahuti. This is a pretty basic build. It's just Book here, 
on the current patch, Deso here on the current patch, and then Obshard here. You got an extra 10 power on Charon's coin. Doom Orb gets 5 power, gets that flat pen. Soul Gem gets an extra 10% power. You have a lot of survivability in terms of movement speed and then that healing. So you have HP 5 here, heal here, movement speed here, movement speed here, movement speed here. And then you've got actually a lot of damage, 30% pen, a little bit of extra damage from the Soul Gem and a little, actually I just shouldn't even say a little, a lot of extra damage from Reaver. And to top it all off, you get the 15% extra damage from Gemma Focus. Should feel phenomenal. Second build is based on Sphinx's Bobble. I had Reaver there, I meant to have Bobble. Gives you very quick 20% cooldown, Reaver Obshard for that 20% pen, and then that extra ability also gets 20% more pen. Reaver gives you that extra damage. And then Sphinx's Bobble puts you at 50% cooldown, and you don't have the downsides anymore. This is still on patch 11.2. Once 11.3 comes back, this is only increasing your cooldown cap from 40 to 50%. The, everything else there is not happening anymore. Um, so this becomes an entirely poke-reliant build with Sphinx's Bobble, Reaver, stuff like that. I I'm, I'm curious to see how Bobble feels in a mid lane build. I think it's mostly going to be dominated in support, but I figured I'd talk about it just to touch on it. Maybe it's so strong, you're just going to see it built. And then lastly, another pretty basic build, Pendulum Doom Orb. As it shows, I'm going to be pretty big on Doom Orb once this patch drops. Double Flat Pin, Doom Orb, Spear of Deso, uh, Reaver Obshard, Mirrodin to finish out the build. A lot of damage in this build, a lot of damage in this build. Problem is, not a ton of survivability. You actually have Basically nothing outside of movement speed on Doom Orb. I think it'll feel really good still in terms of how much damage you're outputting, but you might be able to get dove. You might get one shot a couple times by Assassin, so relics are very important with this build. Next up, support. I just gotta show hell. It, this is what I think is gonna dominate the game. This is showing you 60% cooldown. And it's just because Prophetic, Breastplate, Fey Hoops, Bobble gets you that 50% instantly. Mantle of Discord just gives you a ton of more protections. And then I'd actually sell this Breastplate of Valor late game for Breastplate of Regrowth. But I want... To get to that instantly 50% cooldown as quick as you can. So that's why I'm showing Breastplate of Valor here. But this build will feel great. The only reason I'm having it as Breastplate of Valor, you'll be at 60% is because I want 50% as quick as possible. Once it goes late, sell it, get a little bit more utility. You could go almost anything else here. I just think Breastplate of Regrowth would feel the best to replace Breastplate of Valor. But I think Hell is going to dominate the game. Her Afro going to be super annoying. Nox is another one that can be very, very annoying. This is the hell build that I would probably be running when I first started. And then really no changes to ADCs. XC mannequins got very, very tiny changes. So I didn't really care to touch on those two too much. So we'll do a magical ADC instead. And the first one that came to mind with all the mage changes was this build. Mannequins for the early game and then the really good objective damage. Because I think a big thing that mages don't have is great, consistent objective damage. Mace kind of makes up for that. You also still keep that extra lifesteal you get from autoing harder. Yes, your abilities don't hit as hard with this build, but you'll have a lot of good auto damage here. And you'll also have pretty good one-shot potential with Perfected Rodity, or this should be the other rod, with Calamitous Rodity Hootie, Magus, and then Typhons just making your lifesteal do a little bit more. 40% pen on your two, and then you also have the extra damage from Magus, extra damage from Rod when they go below the mark. I think this build will feel really good also. I've kind of put it up in the air on if I'd want to go hastened or not. I'm just a really big hastened believer. I think it's not statted that bad. That extra movement speed gives you a little bit more survivability. And I've always thought that mage ADCs felt best when they had gas pedal. It doesn't feel like physical hunters need it because they have a lot of utility in their kit to like kind of chase you down and stuff like that. A lot of the mages don't really have that. So I'm, I'm a believer in it. Replace this item with Cyclopean if you want, Telkines if you want. I'm going to try it with hastened. Yeah. And there it is. A few of the builds that you might be seeing in patch 11.3 and stuff that I'm specifically going to be trying. Go out, try it. Let me know what you guys think. Or let me know what you guys think before even trying it. Anything that you're really excited to look at. And let me know what you think about the bobble change. Because I think that is very dubious. Uh, I think it's going to be very important to focus on that for patch 11.3. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll see you guys again next time. Peace.